Hello, my name is Adele and I'm one of the tutors from Lifelong Learning. We met last week, if you saw last week's video. If you didn't, welcome today. And while our sessions at the Turf Lane um, kitchens are on pause, because unfortunately we can't meet each other face to face, I'm doing some sessions at home. So welcome and I hope you enjoyed today's session. Um, I've just washed my hands in my antibacterial soap and I've left my antibac on my work surfaces for five minutes and I'm just giving them a wipe down and I've also done the handle on the fridge because I live in a, a busy household and it seems to be compulsory that whoever comes into my kitchen they just open the fridge and I'm quite certain that everybody does not wash their hands each time they enter my kitchen so I'm a, a big fan of keeping my kitchen as clean as I can do although it's not always easy so last week I introduced you to the Change for Life campaign, which hopefully you would heard of anyway. But if you have a look, get a chance to have a look and Google it. There's lots of wonderful recipes. And we were thinking about encouraging our five a day and getting all those fruits and veg in our meals last week. But this week, I just want to make you aware of another really good website for more information. And it's the um, British Heart Foundation. I get this free magazine each month, it's full of great tips for looking after our hearts and as heart disease is the biggest killer in our country, it's really important if we can make little changes to our lifestyles that we can really help ourselves to live longer and live healthier. So um, last week, just like we were thinking about, there's lots of um, tips about how to get your five a day in your everyday meals and this week there's a good article to read about reducing salt in our diet. So well worth it, totally free, and there's a, a range of recipes on the British Heart Foundation website, and one of those we're going to look at today. But when you, if you get the magazine, they also have some nice colourful recipe pages to pull out and keep as well. So I do recommend, if you get a chance, to look up the British Heart Foundation. But today we're going to do a vegetable stir-fry, because it kind of follows on from what we cooked last week. So we're looking at recreating that rainbow when we're cooking again. So I'll introduce you to um, this week's ingredients. Put whatever you like in a stir fry. So I didn't have to go out and buy anything today. I went through my vegetable box and thought, perfect. And I've tried to recreate that rainbow. We mentioned last week about how every different colour and every different fruit and vegetable contains something different that's good for you. So if you can try and eat a rainbow, you're going to know that you're going to have lots of health benefits from those fruits and vegetables. So I've got, I've got some onions, um, or you can use a shallot or spring onions, I've got some garlic, some fresh ginger, I've got my beetroot, um, I've got a courgette, a carrot, some little yellow peppers that came from the allotment in Alexandra Park, I've got some a different coloured chillies that um, came out of um, my um, brother-in-law's garden he said they're so easy to grow and he had loads of them so they're rather wonderful and I've got some chard but you could use any type of cabbage that you wanted to with chard I've cut the stalks separately and I'm going to chop them separately and they'll go in my pan before the leaves because the leaves cook quicker so I will I've chopped those separately and they'll go in towards the end but like I say you can just chop up cabbage works just as well you could also add um, things out of your store cupboard, so if you wanted to, you could put some, some sweet corn kernels, or some kidney beans, or some chickpeas, whatever you like, all adds to it. I found some chestnuts in my cupboard, and I'm not going to lie, I've probably had these since, um, since Christmas when I had them with my sprouts and my chestnuts, but they are still in date. So I'm going to add a few of those as well for um, a bit of an extra texture and I, I really like the chestnuts, I didn't actually know I still had those. And for my protein, so we've got all our fruits and veg and again we've hit our five quite easily. I'm going to be um, using smoked tofu in my stir fry today. Um, I'm actually making this for my cameraman's lunch and he's a vegetarian so tofu gets a big thumbs up from Gary, doesn't it Gary? <laughs> Obviously, um, meat eaters, you can add turkey, chicken, um, thin strips of pork or, or beef, um, you could add prawns, so you really can make a stir fry from whatever you've got available. 
and then we're going to make a nice sauce um, to add at the end. Oh, forgot to add, I'm going to also throw in a handful of cashew nuts as well to add that little bit of crunch. And had I had any pineapple, I would have probably added a little bit of pineapple. Like I say, you can try whatever you like, but I, I really like the pineapple with the chilli, so you've got that um, sharpness and sweetness as well. The idea of a stir fry is that you cook it quite quickly and you're keeping all that goodness into your vegetables. So we want like small matchsticks, like I've done the courgettes and the peppers and my shard leaves, I will chop them further and I'll chop the, um, the cabbage leaves, whatever you're using. Um, the carrots and the beetroot, I've made ribbons, so you just get your vegetable peeler and just make some ribbons, so nice and thin. Or, if you prefer, you can chop those into matchsticks as well. I finally sliced my onions, which I would do if I was using spring onions. And then you can grate or finely chop your garlic and your ginger. Just a little tip, an easy way to, um, to peel your ginger. You don't need your um, potato peeler. You can just scratch it with your spoon. And normally, it peels off really easily. But this one's decided to be a bit awkward. Oh, there we go. It just peels off really easily. So you don't have to struggle with a potato peeler. And then you can grate that or chop it very finely. You don't want great big chunks of ginger though, so just be a little bit careful with that. Same with your chilies. I'm not going to put all four in because my cameraman would not forgive me, but I'm just going to chop those finely as well. This is the tofu. So once you've taken it out of the packaging, you just drain it because it does have a bit of juice in with it. And then I've just sliced it. It's quite easy to slice. And then I'm just cutting that into cubes. And that's going to go in my, my wok, or you can use a large frying pan. And I'm going to be frying with sesame oil. Um, but you can just use your normal olive oil, vegetable oil, rapeseed oil, whatever you use. But we're only looking to use just a couple of teaspoons. So a teaspoon is the smaller size spoon. Okay. We've looked at all the vegetables we're going to have and we've looked at our source of protein and I'm using tofu and cashew nuts for my protein. So then we're going to think about the sauce that we're going to add at the end of our stir fry. So we're going to make one and all I've made this with is three tablespoons of um, stock which was made with the very low salt stock cube. So I've got three tablespoons in here. So remember the tablespoon is the biggest spoon. And I've also got um, three tablespoons of fresh apple juice. Equally, it's very nice if you are adding um, pineapple to your stir fry, you can use the fresh juice. Not if it's in syrup, but if you use tinned pineapple in fresh juice, you could use that in your sauce as well. And then I've got the, the lower salt and um, soy sauce and it's two teaspoons. So that's the, the smaller spoon of soy sauce. And that's all going to get mixed together and this will get added at the end of our stir fry. So that's apple juice, soy sauce, low um, salt stock, all mixed together. Compared where, I've got a couple of sa example sachets here of um, stir fry sauces, which are very tasty, but if you check on the back, um, every food item by law has to have its nutritional information per 100 grams. So, so that makes it easy to compare different products. So both these have contain sugar per 100 grams. One's 28.2 and the other one's 32.8 grams of sugar per 100 gram. So that means whatever quantity of this sauce you use, that a third of it is actually sugar. And if I was using that amount of sugar in my sauce, 32 grams, Four grams is one sugar cube, so that means I would be saying we're now going to add eight sugar cubes to our sauce, and I'm sure you'd be like aghast. So, but just think, if you were using a bought sauce, you could be adding that much sugar to your sauce. So please check the labels, and where possible, make your own. I know I'm not going to deny that there isn't sugar in the apple juice or the pineapple juice 
but it is natural fruit sugars and each day 150 millilitres of fruit juice is your maximum. I would not recommend that you drink more than that because after that your body is taking on board too much sugar. But in its natural form, there's lots of other goodness as well in the apple juice or the, the pineapple juice. But in a cube of sugar, there's absolutely no nutritional value whatsoever. So, something to think about. If you can substitute natural fruits instead of raw sugar, then that's a good, good healthy swap to do. Just to add, if you added the full sachet of this stir fry sauce into your dinner, you would be actually adding 10 sugar cubes to your meal. So the starchy carb, which is the food group that we get our energy from, for this dish comes from our noodles. And again, you can use whatever type of noodles you like. You can use fresh noodles, fat noodles, thin noodles, dried noodles. But it's dried noodles that I've got today because that was all I had in my cupboard, but it's fine anyway. I've just got back from my holidays, so um, I haven't stocked up on, on everything yet. Hence why I'm wearing my shorts today, because I'm still in that holiday mood. <laughs> so it's one sheet of noodle per person. So refer to the packet of whatever type of noodles you've got, but I'm bringing the water to boil, and while I'm doing the stir fry, these noodles are going to be boiling as well, and they don't take long, but like I say, refer to the packet of whatever it is you've got. So I'm dropping those into the water and I've put my two teaspoons of my sesame oil, whatever oil you're using. And again, you can always make your own oil if you um, soak some um, garlic or chilli in your own oil and just keep it in a little jar and then you can make your own special stir fry oils. And I'm just going to heat that up. We do want the pan hot. And um, I'm not used to cooking from my own kitchen and I'm looking at this pan thinking, girl, you need a new pan. So, mum, if you watch this video, maybe a new, a new stir fry pan for Christmas. <clears throat> I'm going to put in my um, tofu first of all, when it's heated up. And then gradually add the other ingredients, leaving my soft leaves till last. So hopefully you can hear it sizzling because the pan is nice and hot. And you can see our rainbow coming together there quite nicely. So the noodles take four minutes and hopefully that will just be the nice time for our food. Obviously if you're using meat, chicken for instance, because everything's cut into thin strips, it won't take long, but you do need to check that your meat is cooked completely through. Make sure it's not red in the middle and all the juices that are running from it are running clear. I don't have that worry with tofu. So everything looks and smells great in the pan. My timer's just gone off to let me know that my noodles are ready. They took four minutes. So I'm going to turn those off and drain them, and then they can be added to the pan. salt because even though I use the lower salt soy sauce it is still high in salt so peppers allowed but not salt and there we go cameraman here is your lunch and I hope you all enjoy this at home and I look forward to meeting you soon face to face with lifelong learning cooking sessions